Hey everyone, Pastor Caleb here with another daily devotion. They're becoming less and less daily though, to be honest, for a number of reasons. I mean, I had my whole thing with my daughter being born, and then this past week I tried to record this on Thursday, and my computer just said, nope, we're not recording this file. <laughs> so I gave up on Thursday and said, I'll catch you on Monday. Uh, maybe some of you need to catch up on podcasts or YouTube videos or whatever. That's my problem. I'm backlogged on podcasts, and uh, I need to get caught up, but such is life, I suppose. So maybe the days off did you some good. I suppose it more frustrated me than did me any good, but I'm happy to be back with you as we finish up Deuteronomy chapter 5. We had slowed way down on the Ten Commandments, which I'd encourage you to go back and see if you have not seen them or heard them. Uh, But we're going to start picking up the pace again. We're going to finish all of chapter 5 today, and then we'll get into chapter 6, which is also some really important doctrine, the Shema, which is the ancient creed of the uh, nation of Israel, which uh, has just a whole lot of great, great stuff packed into it. So looking forward to picking up the pace again with you. If you want to follow along with the text, you can find that in the description of the video or podcast. I'll read for us starting at verse 22 of chapter 5, and then we'll talk about it. It says, These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your, your whole assembly there on the mountain, from out of the fire, the cloud, and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leaders of your tribes and your elders came to me, and you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a person can live even if God speaks with them. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me. The Lord said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. This is God's word. Um, so Moses is essentially summing up the Ten Commandments here and saying, these are the words that were spoken to you on Mount Sinai. And if you guys remember how this all went down, like you heard those words from God and you were absolutely terrified. Uh, So you said, well, Moses, you go and talk to God. You listen to God. We can't listen to him because we're afraid that even though he didn't kill us the first time, he's going to kill us this next time. (laughs) Um, Which is a really interesting thing and maybe worth us considering for a moment. Uh, In in North American Christianity, with our sort of moral therapeutic deism idea that God is just our sort of grandfatherly character up in the sky, that if we're relatively good, he's going to make things go relatively good for us. Um, We just pray to him, I think, without even thinking about it sometimes. And it's not that God is not our father and that he doesn't come to us with uh, generosity and kindness and patience, but he is also still God, right? And, and I think we need to hold those two things in tension. Whenever the, the, the Bible talks about prayer, it does talk about bold prayer, but it also, almost always in the same breath, talks about reverent prayer and understanding who we are talking to. Uh, and that, I think, is the harder portion for us North Americans who tend to be tempted to think that we are God and that the God who actually is the true God is sort of our assistant or sort of our uh, get things done guy so that we can really live the way that we want to live. I mean, just think about this for a second as you evaluate your prayers. How many of your prayers are God fix this for me? Um, not that those prayers are wrong, but it shows, I think, the bent of our heart that we're not primarily thinking about God benefit each other uh, or benefit your kingdom, right? Like the Lord's Prayer teaches us the first couple petitions. Hallowed be your name. God, you're awesome. Your kingdom come. Get your work done. Uh, Your will be done. Not what I want, but what you want. Like the first three things we all talk about, they're all about God uh, because we have that reverence of him as the king as we come to him, even in that first address as our father. So uh, the people say, Moses, you got to go listen to God because it's too terrible for us to listen to him. Uh, do we have that same reverence? When we hear God speak, is it just something we do because we have time this Sunday morning? Or is it something we do because it is the most important thing to hear the Lord God speak to us? Uh, there's another layer to this, which is that this is the foreshadowing of the mediator, Christ, between God and man. 
God and man were separated by sin and human beings had no desire nor uh, ability to come back to God, but there needed to be a mediator in order to restore that relationship. And that ultimately was Jesus Christ when he fulfilled the law, died on the cross, rose again and ascended into heaven. Uh, but Moses is foreshadowing this here, right? He's the guy who's the go-between and God, between God and human beings. Now Colossians 2 will then tell us later, there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And so what Moses was in, unable to do because of his sinfulness and because he was not able to atone for the sins of his people, Christ was able to do ultimately. But we're pointing to this already, and Deuteronomy is going to tell us later in the book that Moses was the foreshadow of a prophet who was going to come, who was going to do much greater things than Moses did. So we're starting to get that a little bit. Um, interestingly, also, we get in this a uh, couple um, sort of asides from God. Uh, God says through Moses that he was pleased with the people's reaction. In other words, the people asked for a mediator and he said, that's good, that's right. Um, of course, we're thinking ultimately of Christ, but also that we would think of the pastoral ministry, that we ask for mediators between God and us, those who would stand in the, the between space between us and God and bring God's word to us. It does not mean, of course, that we do not all have access to God's word, but that God has specifically called the pastoral office and given those men time and resources through their church in order to be experts in the word so that the word of God can continue to be preached to his people. You do that if you give offerings to your church because your offerings support the salary of your pastor, which allows him to be a full-time pastor and not need a part-time job in order to pay his bills so that he can spend his entire time studying the Bible and preaching it to you, exactly what I'm doing right now. If I didn't have a full-time salary, I would be at work right now, but my work is to look at the scriptures and figure out what they're saying and communicate that to you so that you can grow in the eternal word of God, which prospers you, right? As you learn it, that's what God says, like, listen to this and you will prosper and you'll live long in the land that I am giving you. One other thing that I think is uh, worth noting in this text is verse 29, where he says, Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to hear me, fear me, excuse me, and keep all my commands always so that it might go well with him and their children forever. This is God saying, look, I know you're going to leave me. I know you're going to be unfaithful to me. I know you're not going to keep my covenant. I know that right now you are. You're saying, let me hear the word of God, but there will be a time when you do not. And yet God still chooses to move forward with it. I mean, isn't that amazing? That's the type of grace that our God has. He knows the sin that we are going to commit, and he continues to be faithful to us throughout it all. That's the kind of relationship that no other person can give you, right? No, nobody gets into a marriage knowing that the other person is going to cheat on them. Nobody gets into a friendship knowing that the person is going to betray them, but God does with you. Despite your sin and despite your unfaithfulness, despite, despite your betrayal of him, he is willing to continue to be faithful to you, continue to give you his word, even though he doesn't have to give it to you, even though he actually has to make the way possible through a mediator to get that word to you, he is willing to do all of it so that you can hear his word and live. And so Moses' last command in this text, I think, is worth noting also. He says in verse 32, So be careful to do what your Lord has commanded you. Do not turn aside from the right or to the left. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you. This is hard work. Um, theology is not easy. It's a joyous thing because we understand that every bit of theology that we learn is another step closer to understanding God. But it's not easy. It's something we need to be careful about. Not because the content is particularly hard, although it is difficult in some places. Most of theology is pretty simple. The problem is our sinful nature fights against it regularly and wants us to doubt it, to leave it, to forsake it, to think that it's stupid, all these things. And so we ought to be careful to hold on to God's word and continue to hear it, to force ourselves to be in places where it is preached, like right here as you're watching or listening to this daily devotion. I'm thankful for that because even though, um, you know, I'm just a man, I'm speaking the words of the eternal God through the scriptures that he has given us. And that is strengthening your faith right now. And that's awesome. So thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time for these somewhat sort of daily devotions. And I look forward to getting into Deuteronomy 6 with you next time. If you like what we're doing here, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Um, share this with somebody if you think it's valuable, and I will catch you next time. Make sure you also click on the links on the screen on YouTube to find something else to watch.